Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we are showing you how to install inch and a half snap lock panels on a residential metal roofing project. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett, make sure you subscribe here. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday where we're continuing our residential metal roofing install on Adam Mazella's house. And today we are moving on to starting to install the panels, inch and a half snap lock panels. Last week we installed perimeter trim, eaves, rakes, and valley metal. And today we are beginning to install panels. Matt Lane from Metal Construction Solutions and Installations is back with us and he's gonna be demonstrating the process from start to finish. So let's go take a look. A couple things we want to watch. We've really done a good job, I think, of trying to make sure uh, nails are clear, nail heads are down, surfaces are flat. But again, we've iced and water shielded. You still get things on the roof. And every now and then you miss something here. I, I don't know if it's a staple or what it is, but we want to make sure we get this uh, out from underneath here. Because if we put this down and then you put any weight on the panel near it, that'll put a dent in the panel. And you'll see that walking in the house every single day for the next 30, 40 years, however this roof is on here. So we wanna make sure we take care of anything we find as we're working around. That way the roof can look as good as it is, you know, meant to look when we're all finished. Once the perimeter trim and valleys are in place, it's time to install our first panel. Panel layout is a huge part of the process and there's a few different ways you can do it. In this case, the pipe penetration on the front of the house was the driving factor of layout. So Matt measured over to calculate the size of the first panel. On Adam's roof, we've got a couple factors here. We've got a soil stack in the front here. We've got a vent stack right there for, I believe it's a air conditioning unit. And then we've got these sheets coming across on the top. We wanna to try to tie it all together, but sometimes you have to make choices. So we're measuring from the end of the building, figuring out where the edge of our sheet is. We've measured the width of our sheet. We figured out how wide that is and how many sheets are gonna fit in here. We want to land this soil stack here in the middle of the panel. So the only thing we have is a boot detail on the front of the house. On the back, we're going to have to do a little more complicated of a detail, which Adam wanted to put on the back because there's just more going on and he didn't want to see it from the house. So we laid the sheets out. So we land on this pipe. And then when we do the pipe in the back, we'll have to do the other detail. And also so that when we come across the ridge, the sheets are lined up so everything just looks clean and neat. We started installing on the back side of the house first because we wanted the panel ribs of the front and back roof planes to line up at the ridge. We cut our first panel on the back to be the same size as the first panel on the front. Matt marked the panel and cut it lengthwise, adding one inch to the width to account for the hem. Just getting the end of the panel wrapped around, little tricks and stuff. You know, I, around my vice grips tongs, I wrap some ice and water shield. This is a real fabric-y surface. We take metal to this, we're gonna scratch it. So anything we can do, you know, throughout this job to protect this paint finish, you know, is gonna be real important. So even little things like this, we wanna protect our grips, keep them clean. Sometimes put a thin piece of wood between your ends when you're closing things up, anything to protect the paint. When it comes time to install the clips on your standing seam panel, check with your manufacturer to get the required clip spacing. Our manufacturer's technical director happened to be on the job site shooting videos, so we could just ask him. The clips are going down every 16 inches on center for this project, so the crew marks each clip location and snaps a chalk line across the roof for future reference.
We want to make sure as we put these clips in, you know that we don't have a clip out here and then a clip pushed in. These ones actually hug the panel pretty tight, but you can get gaps in them. And the panels, you do that, you'll be throwing oil canning in the sheets. On a longer sheet, you can actually look up the sheet, and if one guy's putting clips in, the sheet will actually be bowing ahead because they're forcing a gap in between every sheet. So you get them too tight, you know, you can force oil canning. You make them too loose, you'll actually bow the sheet. Your screw heads, they got to go in flat. They got to go in straight and neat. If you put that screw head in, for example, you know, like that, you're not paying attention. That screw is going to telegraph through that next sheet and put a dent in it. So the flatter we can keep this screw, the better we can keep that screw, the better your roof job's gonna appear in the end. When you're starting your panels, you're gonna wanna make sure that when you get down to that eave side, you're able to leave a gap in between the actual end of the panel here and the eave metal. That's gonna allow for expansion and contraction over time. And somebody like Sheffield Metals has clear uh, guidelines on how much of a gap should be uh, placed between the panel and the eave metal depending on the material, panel length, panel type. For this uh, residential roof, it's a short panel. We've got steel here, it's a pretty hot day. We've got about an eighth inch gap uh, between the panel and the eave metal here um, to leave that for expansion and contraction. So we're just uh, fabbing the ends of these panels. We have to cleat the bottom around. We have to fold the top up as an extra cap to receive our closure. I'm just doing this, filling in time ahead of the guys who are installing to help keep things uh, moving efficiently. The panels are fabricated with a standard one inch hem at the eave and a one inch bend at the top. along you know we're working on this roof and we did everything we could to keep the roof clean but as we're working and we're still watching the ice and water shield uh, here somehow or another we got a nail we found underneath the ice and water shield and we don't want this under our panel because like we've discussed before you know you're gonna penetrate through that panel and leave a dent in it and right, so look you can see we've got this under here tried to get it but we found it we want to get that out um, per the weather tight warranty on on these products, you know, we need to patch this. We can't leave it. So what we're gonna do is we cut a round patch. We don't want corners lifting. Very much like the guys doing a flat roof would repair something. We're gonna patch this in. Make sure that's sealed around. Just take that time to make sure, you know, we're, we're good. And we're just gonna come here and caulk around these edges because this is what the manufacturers Want to make sure that's sealed and down so it doesn't lift for their products of warranty. And we don't want to caulk it real thick and heavy because we don't want that, the sealant, 
pushing up on the bottom of the panel, creating its own lifted point and putting an oil can in that panel. So that would be how we would fix that particular issue. That little guy can cause all sorts of problems on your finished roof installation. So find those things, keep an eye out for them, and fix them. With the underlayment patch taken care of, we kept sheeting across the back plane of the roof. Matt cut a penetration for the pipe when we came to it, and we'll finish that flashing later down the line. So what we're doing here is we measured the end of the roof to the bottom of the panel. Now we've taken a number top of the roof to the end of the panel. Not all buildings are square as you're sheeting your sheets you try to keep everything square too. But what we have at the bottom of the panel is 271 and 3 8 The top of the panel is 270 and 3 quarters. So the top of the panel is, well, in this case it's not bad, it's about 5 8 closer. So we're going to fan these panels just a little bit on the bottom over about 15 sheets. So when we get to the end of the building, everything lines up nice and square. You don't want to get to the end of the building, have two or three panels left, and all of a sudden find out you're an inch and a half, two inches out of square. That'll really show up in the finished product. So we want to take the time ahead to make sure, and if it's a bigger, longer roof, sometimes you take two or three points and measure it, but make sure that as we get to the end of this building, we're going to come into it nice and square and have a clean panel at the end. Well, we'll put a real small gap. We don't want to stretch it too much at the bottom of the panel, but we'll leave a real small gap in there, say a 16th. Uh, in this case, pushing maybe an eighth, just to make the bottom come ahead a little bit as we come to the end. If the panels would have been reversed, if the number for the top of the panel would have been a greater distance, we'd have kept the bottom tight and then pulled the top of the panel ahead just a little bit. So as you're paneling, the Z closure goes here at the top where you snap your ridge detail on. And you're gonna want that as even and as straight as possible coming across the roof. So one tip in order to be able to do that, here we have chalk lines uh, spaced evenly between the ridge here on both sides across the entire length of the roof. And then over here where the panels are going down, as each panel goes down, it gets marked right here so that we know where that chalk line falls. And that way, these Z-closures will go down nice and even and straight across the entire length of the panel run. So for Adam's house here, once all of these panels go down, the Z-closures will go down on this entire side. But when we move over to this side of the roof and start paneling down here, we're gonna go one Z-closure at a time per panel as we come across. That way it's gonna minimize foot traffic across the panels and uh, we won't have the potential for additional damage, people walking on the panels here. So we're putting our Z-closures in. We already snapped our lines earlier and we marked our panels so we know where to put them. Uh, this is just a cap to seal off the top of the panel and then it gives something for our ridge cap to cleat onto. Later on, we'll hook the ridge cap on these and we'll fasten this off so that way it's got a consistent hook all the way down. It makes for a really strong ridge. Uh, these closures we made in the shop earlier, we already measured the panel. We cut them to length to fit inside. Uh, we went ahead and actually pre-drilled them all. It just makes it easier to put the screws in. Uh, holes are already marked. You see down in here, these are put in. Uh, rolled a strip of butyl tape on here. It's a non-curing uh, tape sealant. It works great for this application. So we're just gonna line it up with our marks from our chalk line. Set it in, I'm trying not to scratch the panel, anything. And anytime we cannot nick the panel, obviously we're just gonna end up with a better quality product in the end. We fabricated these Z's to the height of the sheet. By the time we add the thickness of our butyl and everything, we end up just above the high, just enough room for our clip. 
And with these panels, four screws, that's what it would require. If we had a hip or a wider panel, we'd need a more fastening at the top. This is a really key. This is important because this is what carries your panel in most uh, architectural installations. The clips hold it down, but they allow for the panel to move. The load is being transferred up here to this top in this sheet. So these four screws are crucial. I wouldn't use, you know, really small fasteners that might snap. You want to keep something that's a little bit beefier here as well. And if you got a longer panel, maybe a few more screws in here. And that's pretty much it. We're going to caulk these highs in to keep the water out going up the sides and in the back here on the four corners. And that is it for that sheet. Next, we can move to the front side. The first panel on the front uses the same measurements as the first panel on the back. So Matt cut it down to size and started bending over the gable hem with his Wuko bender. Pretty straightforward, but with a tool like this that rides the edge, the cleaner and the straighter your cut, the easier it's gonna be to form and the better your rake is gonna look when you're done. For this sheet, I want to grip that bottom clip so as we run clips up the rest of the way, we're not pushing the sheet out. That way they're all forced to be held in a straight line consistent with the panel. While paneling across the front of the house, we came across a section that juts out and required some extra attention. So on areas where your eave may have some transitions here, for example, we come across the eave drops down and then we continue across the gutter line. Sometimes the best way to handle that is simply uh, do what we do on a gable end. Hem the panel under, hem the paint come down, hem the panel under this way, and then just continue the same thing down. It's a nice, simple, a clean look. Um, on this house, this particular detail where we have this transition takes place in a couple different forms. There's this area here. There's a few areas in the front along the, the gable end where we have that similar transition. Hope this video is helpful. For more Just Like It, subscribe here to the Metal Roofing channel because next time we are talking about how to install panels when we come to the valley. Really big topic and excited to share it with you guys. Comment down below if you have any questions at all. Anything else, check us out at Sheffield Metals Online and as always, I'm Thad Barnett and we will catch you next time.